So a fan of the show sent me a link to a video in which Justin Trudeau, the Canadian Prime Minister, apparently had a moment of, of self-awareness. And I think we should, we should go ahead and check that out together. So let's take a quick look. We've come to a moment that, quite frankly, we've seen coming over the past years. And we've talked about it in, in, in the news, not just about Ukraine, but about democracies around the world, that we see a bit of a slippage in our democracies. Wow. Yes, exactly. This is what I've been saying. Maybe we're suddenly on the same page. Maybe he's turned around. What do you think? Because I can certainly see that. Heck, you look as far back as the Patriot Act, and that could be seen as kind of a slippage in regards to the sort of loss of rights that was given up there in the name of safety. And of course, in the more modern times, you can see throughout countries, you know, Canada, the United States, uh, Britain, and Australia most especially, we've been paying a lot of attention to, and under the auspices of fighting COVID, so many different rights of citizens have been trampled on by governments who have been slipping, to use his terminology, toward authoritarianism. You think he's actually, you know, being more enlightened here? Countries turning towards slightly more authoritarian leaders. Yes, exactly. Of course, maybe he's been spending some time in the mirror and he's thinking, you know, that he shouldn't have handled the truck protest that way, that he should have respected the rights of his citizens to have a, a peaceful disagreement with him. You think that's possible? Is it possible that he looked at the Arthur Pavlovsky case, the pastor who's been repeatedly arrested and imprisoned for preaching and for feeding the poor, and he decided that perhaps he should have handled that differently, he should have actually gotten involved and said, hey, you know, our citizens actually have rights in this country, we're, we're, we're not a, you know, a third world country and we're going to handle this right and we're going to respect religious freedom. Do you think that he's actually going to turn around? Countries allowing increasing misinformation and disinformation to be shared on social media, turning people against the values and the principles of democracies that are so... Okay. Okay. See, I don't see how you can, you know, hold the, these two views concurrently. How does he go from criticizing the slippage toward authoritarianism to telling us how we need to do more to crack down on that misinformation, or in other words, that speech that he doesn't like? It's just amazing. And there's such little self-awareness when you have this guy who's talking about authoritarian regimes as if they're across the world in Russia, but totally not at home as he's you know, cracking down on political dissidents and arresting them and imprisoning them. You know, and, and in this, this last sentence that he made there, he's criticizing countries for allowing misinformation on social media. Now, we're talking about social media. What are we talking about? We're talking about private companies, right? Like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and maybe TikTok. And, and, but private companies, ultimately, run by private citizens. And what he wants to see is governments telling those private companies that it is their job to crack down on the speech of their, their citizens and their users, essentially on, on behalf of the government. That's what he's suggesting, a while complaining about the slippage toward authoritarianism. It, it's mind-boggling that he can actually you know, tie this together in some bizarre way. But since he wants to talk about authoritarianism, let's take a bit of a moment to do that. It's authoritarian if you pressure private companies to, you know, to silence people, to silence citizens, because you are unable to do it yourself, um, because it looks bad politically, right? It's still authoritarian. It is also authoritarian to silence directly those with whom you disagree, especially if you're using your power in public office. It's authoritarian to shut down bank accounts of your political dissidents. It's authoritarian to use hostile police forces, ag uh, you know, aggressively against actual peaceful protesters. It's authoritarian to force people to get medical treatments that they do not want. It doesn't even matter what the medical treatment is. It doesn't even matter how safe it is. It's authoritarian to force a person to get a medical treatment that he does not want. It's authoritarian to prevent people from leaving your country unless they comply with your medical demands, as is the case in Canada right now. So yeah, there's a little bit of a lack of self-awareness going on there, you might say. And when you look over at Canada, um, 
they have very few freedoms. They have a QR code based system um, that is being used and exploited in a lot of different places in regards to getting into restaurants and so on. You also have difficulty shopping in places like Quebec without getting certain medical treatments that are required. So this is a guy who probably shouldn't be talking about authoritarianism on the other side of the world and should look a little closer to home.